What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murphy, and this is Toot Toot Full Theme Ahead. Full Theme Ahead is a series where we take a game and look specifically at the theme and talk about the theme, what the theme is, and really what it is is how well is the theme integrated into the game. Is it a theme that's just pasted on, like it could be anything at all, or do the mechanics and the things that you're doing in the game really feel like they make sense because of the theme. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a game called Dungeon Pets. This is one of our favorite games. We really, really love Dungeon Pets. And I'm gonna go ahead and bury the hatchet. This game's theme is amazing. Absolutely amazing and is implemented so, so well. You could probably turn off the whole video right now if you wanted to. Make sure you like and subscribe before you do that. Thank you so much. But nonetheless, we're gonna talk about the theme of this game because it's probably, Ooh, it's probably my first or second favorite theme of any game ever. It's just so much fun. It's so cool. It's a game by Czech Games Edition and Vlada a kind of like medium to heavyweight uh, worker placement Euro game with just this really, really great theme. So what are you doing in Dungeon Pets? In Dungeon Pets, you are a pet shop owner in this world, set in the same world as a game called Dungeon Lords, which is by CGE and Vlada Chvatil again. But this time, you are the little imps and you are running a, a pet store and you are trying to sell those big monstrous, ah, scary pets to these Dungeon Lords as they pass through your town. Already, what a weird theme. Like that's just so cool, so different, so fun. Like have a pet store? Why isn't owning a pet store like a more common theme? You don't even need to make it like weird monster pets. You could just have like, I don't know, like dogs and cats and bunnies and stuff. People would love that. Get on it, people. But nonetheless, you are raising monsters, big monsters, lots of teeth. They got magic. They're poof, 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 with their magic and they're trying to constantly get out of their cage. They're big and mean. They're smelly and they poop a lot. All sorts of kind of different monsters in this game. And there are going to be different dungeon lords that are coming through the town. They're coming through the town each round. There's going to be a new dungeon lord until the last round where there's two different dungeon lords. And when they come into town, you are gonna try and sell a pet to them. But here's the thing, each dungeon lord will want something different out of their pet. If it's a big scary dungeon lord, they may want a big scary pet. If it's a little grandma dungeon lord, she just wants a pet that gets sick all the time and that eats a lot so she can be like, hello little monster, here's some food, oh I'll pet your little nose. So depending on who is in town, you're gonna have to try to cater the pets that you have to that dungeon lord because if you meet more of the dungeon lord's wants and desires for their pet, they will then pay you more and you get more points. And it is just so cool and so weird and I just love it. I love, love, love the theme of this game. But let's get into some of the nitty gritty and talk about the different mechanics in this game and talk about how those mechanics really feel like you're running a pet store. So each person is going to have their own little pet store and their own pet store has um, kind of like their living quarters with their different imps. And then you have a spot with four different spots for cages where you can then put your pets. This is where you hold them. And you have a bunch of different imps and during the main action part of the game, you are taking your imps and you are going out into town. And in the town is the main game board there that has all the different worker placement spots on them. Over here you can get cages, over here you can get new monsters, over here you can get food, over here you can do this. There's a whole bunch of different places you can can go to. But before this action phase starts, every person behind their little screen secretly chooses how big they want the groups of imps that are going out into town to be. The bigger the group of imps, the quicker they get to go out because they're like, we're bigger and faster than you. We get to go out first. And so if you want a really high priority, like, man, I have to get a new cage this turn. I have to, have to, have to. I can't let anyone block that spot for me. Okay, I'm gonna put five M's in this group. That is almost guaranteed to make me go first. And I like that. I think that makes sense for some other things that are kind of like, hey man, if this can happen, if this kind of spot's open, okay, cool. I'll just send one imp there, which is kind of like real life. You're like, man, if I need to get these things done, I'm gonna put forward most of my resources, what are those resources might be, whether it's manpower or money or whatever, I'm gonna put that towards this. And these things over here that I don't really necessarily like absolutely need, okay, like, I'll put towards some resources. If I can get it done, cool. If I can't, it's probably not gonna break the bank or ruin my whole life. So even choosing the groups of ints makes sense in this kind of world. And then all the different spots make sense. You can go here and get cages. You need cages to hold your animals. And all the cages do different stuff because all your animals need different stuff. They all have different needs that you need to take care of or else they will get very sad and they can even die or run away. It's really sad actually. So the housing you get for those monsters has to reflect their needs. So if it's an animal that's really, really rambunctious, like ah, 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 constantly trying to break out, you need to get a big beefy cage with a lot of spikes to keep that monster in there. So there's like, when I get out, I'm gonna you up. 
And then you take that crazy monster and you send it to a dungeon lord that wants that exact kind of monster. That dungeon lord is like, I want a monster that's going to destroy everything. And then you, then you point at this one over here. It's just like, I will kill everyone. And he's like, dope. So you get the cages that match the monsters. Okay, well then what else do the monsters need? Monsters need to eat. Monsters are either herbivores or carnivores or they can be omnivores and they can eat either. And that'll show up on their little egg thing. And so, okay, you have two herbivores and a carnivore. I need to go over here to the food spot and I need to get some food. The red food being meat, the green food being plants. You can get an ability that allows you to corral your pets better. You can get an ability that makes it easier for you to meet the needs of some of your pets. And even the little spaces are interesting too, because the cage space, you need to send at least two imps to. And that makes sense because they have to carry the cages. The cages are big. They hold big monsters. So one imp can't be like, ah, I'm carrying it on my own. Two of them have to like, dun, 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 dun. And that makes sense. If you're going to buy a monster, you have to send an imp, but you also have to send at least one money. If you don't send a money, what are you using to buy that monster with? You need money there. So you have to make sure you send money with that imp. If you don't, well, you're SOL. You're not getting that monster today. There's a spot where you can get a potion, which will make it easier to meet your pet's needs. Also, that spot is the hospital. Because if your pet breaks out, you can send your imps after them, but it injures those imps trying to get them back, which makes sense. The big scary monster, little, little imps. So those imps get sent to the hospital. So you gotta send some imps over there, go get your cousins out of the hospital, come back. Hey, we're going back to work. All the different spots make sense. All of the different areas of the board matter and, and make sense and make you a better pet owner and make you better at taking care of these pets so that you can sell them to dungeon lords. And that's so nice in like a heavy Euro worker placement game. A lot of these kinds of games tend to be pretty bland. They're kind of like, all right, you go here and you get gold. You go here and you get silk. Cool. But why not put a fun theme on it? Why not then make all those mechanics make sense for that theme? Because this theme really matters. You take out this theme and try to put a different theme in there. This game wouldn't really work. Everything here is integrated in. Everything here matters and makes sense. And you're doing this for this exact reason. And if you take out that theme, that mechanic, that spot doesn't really make sense anymore. I love Dungeon Pets and Dungeon Pets is a great game, but one of the main reasons why we love it so much is because of the theme and because of how well the theme is integrated into the game. All right, so we need a paste can meter. We rate everything here in terms of cans of paste. Cans of paste is how much is the theme pasted on? Some games it's like 100% pasted on, doesn't even matter what the theme is, who cares? And then there's other games where the theme really, really matters. So a lot of paint cans is bad, a little paint cans is really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and actually give this zero paint cans. I, I, I don't like to give zeros generally because I think every game has at least like one thing that like doesn't make sense, but I legitimately cannot think of anything in this game, any spot on the board, anything that you're doing that doesn't directly make sense in this world. And it's not really integral to this theme and really inspired by this theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a zero. I don't like giving zeros, but you know what? I'm doing it. Dungeon Pets, the theme is perfectly implemented into the game. So that is our thematic review on Dungeon Pets. It's one of our favorite games. If you haven't tried it, please give it a shot for the theme alone. Just get some pooping monsters, have them poop all over the place, and it's just you're just gonna have the best time. And please make sure to like and share this video and subscribe down below if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up while you're there. Put down in the comments what games you would like us to review thematically, whether they have a lot of theme or no theme. We do want to do some ones that we just rip apart because they have absolutely no theme at all. So go ahead and put those down there in the comments. And until next time, my name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murphy. And this has been Toot Toot, Full Theme Ahead. Thank you for watching that video. Just wanted to let you know that we are sponsored by Restoration Games. They make wonderful, wonderful games. And everything we filmed is filmed on top of Game Toppers. Game Toppers is a great way to upgrade your gaming experience. So go to Restoration Games or Game Toppers LLC to find out more. And all that's really, really cool. But you know what's even cooler? This. That's right. I'll show you one more again. Bam. Isn't that cool? Bam. It's cool. But that's the right hand. Let's check out the left. Boom. Quack, 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 quack. That's right, the left is only ducks. Quack, quack. I gotta learn how to spell my left hand. Quack, quack.